Today on Tales of Collecting, we talk about collecting Legos. Hello and welcome back to the Geek Cabal channel. I'm Jim. Bob. And today we're going to... Uh, discuss a topic of, uh, well, tales of collecting Legos in any sort of realm, not just new, not just old, but in general, uh, you know, things that, uh, well, mostly Bobby has learned, but some things that I've learned as well when it comes to, you know, collecting games, or games, Legos. Games. Yeah, uh, so we decided, I decided to do this because of a comment from Charbroil Beefcake. A uh, long time listener, long time listener and commenter, who uh, had had some ideas on what to uh, like future video topics, and one of them was like where to get started with collecting Lego sets. And so a lot of this is going to focus on on that idea. Uh, if you're if you're new to collecting Lego or don't know where to start, uh, or even possibly, and this also applies like if you're buying them for your kids. Okay, a lot of the a lot of the information is going to cover that too. So, uh, first thing, Jim, I hate to say this because this was actually going to be the first thing I was going to say, uh, but it's only Lego. That's the singular and the plural. There is no Legos. And I'm saying that because I'm sure before the end of this video, I'm going to say Legos. But if to say the plural, they're Lego blocks. Okay? That's what the company says. They're Danes. Talk to them if you're ever in Denmark. Also, if you're ever going to be in Denmark near Billund, let me know, because they sell exclusive sets there that I'd kind of like to get a hold of. But it, it, that aside, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about exclusivity here, definitely before the end of this video. So this is going to be a part one of two. Uh, more of like the, a lot of more of the monetary part is going to be in part two. Uh, this is going to be more about what all there is to find and where to find it. Although part of the where to find it is also going to be in part two. So in other words, what I'm saying is, if you like what you see here, stay tuned for part two. Uh, you look like you had something there. No, no. Okay. Well, no, because I was going to say, I'm going to be struggling between, you know, talking about the monetary and where to find stuff, because I think it's going to yeah, be a lot no, of it, it, there, There's definitely going to be some interplay. Like, uh, like I'm de like uh, the very first thing I'm going to say here is going to deal with part of the monetary, kind of. All right, so if, you, if you're buying these to collect them, this part is for collecting... Most of the rest of the video is also going to apply to you if you're buying it for your kids. This part does not, but hopefully. So if you're buying them to collect them, you need to ask yourself a couple of very important questions that's going to determine like how much of this is worthwhile information to you and what you should do with it. So the first question, as silly as this sounds, is are you going to open up the sets? Because, number one, maybe you're buying them just to keep them in the box. Maybe you're buying them thinking... I'll have kids one day and they can have them. Maybe you're thinking, I'm going to sell them. Maybe you just, you know, like them and maybe you're thinking for a rainy day, I'll put them together myself later. Those are a lot of sub-questions, but for the most part, the what the advice I'm about to give you applies to most of those. Well, like I was going to say, or, or the other one is, hey, I found a really good deal and I'm just going to pick it up in the hopes that maybe I will do something with it. Right. A.K.A. the example that I have on the table. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's why it's still in the box, has never been opened. Anything because it was a hey that's a good deal I'm gonna buy that yeah so you'll definitely you'll, you'll you'll come across that not nearly as much as you used to depending on what part of the country you live in uh, also I should say this now uh, although the general advice I'm about to give is like global in nature my specific examples are all going to be from the U S so just very just throwing that out there because like some stores I might mention may not exist in the country you're in and their deal structure may not exist there either. So if you're going to keep them in the boxes, my primary advice is to buy them in a store. Do not order them online because unless you've had the, unless you've had tremendous fortune in what you order online, there's a reasonable chance the box is going to come in banged up. 
which if you're planning on keeping it in the box, that kind of defeats the purpose because presumably you want the box to look nice. Yeah, the, the one that I've seen that happen a lot on, or at least with, with eBay and stuff, is the USC sets, the one, like ones for like the Millennium Falcon or whatever. They're in a more of a square box because yeah. shipping that, one, it's expensive. Two, it's um, trying to keep it packaged in a way that you're not crushing the box, but you're also... Yes, as as someone who sells Lego sets also in their in their spare time, uh, shipping these things is a major pain in the ass because they come in all kinds of weird irregular shapes. I've got to find boxes that are like that could hold that, but aren't like massively larger in one of the three axes it could be, and that rarely works out because they're very thin. Let me just, just lift this up here. You can see the boxes are very thin, but they're very broad. And uh, a few years ago, Lego actually tried to start scaling the boxes down because people kept saying, hey, there's an awful lot of wasted space here. It's a lot of much wasted cardboard. The reason they were the size they were was to give you a rough idea of how big the set is once it's built. So you see what your money's going towards because these are not cheap. And it's, it's a psychological thing. Uh, but people care more about the environment than that. So the boxes have shrunk, thankfully, which makes it easier for me to ship them. Just got to deal with that back inventory of the sets from just before that point. Uh, so, like I said, if you're going to buy them to keep them in the box, I highly recommend buying them in a store. Now, uh, for those of you here in the U.S., that would be like Walmart, uh, Target. I have seen them pop up in places like Aldi. Uh, there's also like Sam's Club, Costco. Uh, Walgreens carries smaller sets. And uh, we will, we'll get into a little bit here down the road here in the video. We're going to get into like which one of those you actually want to go to. And then if you're really lucky, you actually have a Lego store somewhere nearby, which there you'll have plenty of boxes yeah. to choose from to find the one that's in the primo grade. Yeah, and we're, I mean, we're pretty lucky because, I mean, it's two hours to the nearest Lego store for us. That's not too bad, honestly, because you can make a day trip out of that. Right, and we actually have two choices. Yeah. Because we can go to the north side of Indy or we can go to Louisville. So. Oh, yeah, true, true. I'd still rather go to Indy. Yeah. Louisville's a... Uh, as much as I like the town, it's a uh, traffic nightmare <laughs> compared to. Oh, I was thinking the like one of the only I think one of the only two times I've seen a burning vehicle alongside the road is down there. Well, that and uh, the uh, sixty four bridge is like you know it, it's got some issues uh, where they they've at least the last time I looked they had a lane closed out trying to go down there. Well, they're, uh, they're trying to reinforce the bridge, I think. Yeah, because I think the bridge is on the verge of collapse. Um, which is also a reason I, I have a phobia of like collapsing bridges. It's it's a re reoccurring nightmare for me. Uh, but but it, what's sad is like there's plenty of other bridges to choose from there. Louisville has like a dozen bridges that cross. Yeah, that 60, river through there. 65 is where they had been diverting traffic to. So, but uh, anyway, uh, so you can go to, uh, you can go to Lego store or the others that I mentioned, and uh, so just just very brief. Well, no, I'll get into that a little bit later. So uh, if you're not going to keep them in the box, then the condition of the box is much less of a concern. Just make sure they haven't been opened. Yeah, like say, for example, this one here, when I bought this for the kids, uh, again, had a little tear on the side here. So if I was doing my unboxing video, this is where I would talk about the condition of the box. This one had a tore label on it. And I want to say, when I picked this one up, the reason I think I got it was... I could be completely wrong, but I, I believe I only paid like $35 for the, the set. I think this was in the $70 range, $60 range. So yeah. Uh, 621 pieces, so probably in the $60, $70 range. Yeah, which uh, we'll, we'll mention how Jim came to that conclusion here in just a second. So you let's say you're at the point of you do want to open them. Okay, so then the next important question is, do you just want a whole lot of blocks to build whatever you want, or do you want a specific set, a specific design? And uh, if you want the former, just a whole bunch of blocks, there are several sets, which if I edit this correctly, at various points there's going to be some pictures on the screen here. Uh, and you will, those are the far better deal, like in, in cost per block, by far. Like at the moment at Walmart, there is a set that has 1,800 pieces that is $50. So, like... The price per brick, that's that's insane. Uh, however, the problem is like you're not going to get a lot of like the specialty pieces. 
like this has uh, like some of the ice colored pieces, uh, the figures. There are no figures in those large bulk boxes. Um, no accessories for figures, things like that. So uh, that's something to consider. And then like the big bulk sets, uh, they come in a variety. And usually on the, either the side or the back of the box, it actually shows you all the parts that are in the set. It'll be a diagram and it'll tell you how many of each one and which colors and all that. Uh, so if you are just looking for lots and lots of blocks to use, that's the way to go for sure. And kind of a tangent related to that, the last several years on Black Friday, Walmart has had sets that have lots and lots of pieces in them for like 30 bucks. And uh, they go kind of quick. So if you're going to get them, you know, now the way, the way Walmart's restructured Black Friday, they don't go quite as quick now. You don't have to. You don't have to plan it to. You know, get into fisty cuffs with. Uh, yeah, no, with another no. shopper. Or, or I've had to use my superior height advantage to reach over people to grab them. Yeah. And uh, yes, I have done that. So. Yeah, Black Friday's missing that uh, Mortal Kombat uh, section anymore. That. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where you're trying to get something? I mean. I remember at least a few times where somebody literally tried to rip something out of my hand. I'm like, Are you? Yeah, sure. I like to see you try that. I'm just like, I've not ever had that. I did one year, uh, Jessica and I went to Bloomington to go to Target. And uh, as we worked our way across town, we found ourselves over at the Kmart. It used to be a Kmart. It's not a Kmart anymore. Uh, There's only two Kmarts. I know. This was not the one by the mall, but this was the one over behind, uh, like, Bob Evans. Yeah. yeah. Off the third. Yeah. Uh, And both of these are gone now. One of these is a bunch of apartment buildings, and the one I'm talking about is an at-home store. Yep. So we went there, and as we were standing in line waiting for them to open, people were talking about uh, apparently like a big fight broke out at the Walmart in Bedford, and they had come from that direction. And I was kind of like, oh, man, part of me kind of wishes I would have seen that. Another part of me is like, eh. Well, I mean, I, I did the uh, uh, work third shift at Walmart for a few years, and I got to experience all three or four Black Fridays during that time that I was working there. Um that was interesting. Uh, so it was you now. What was less interesting is the fact that they just blare Mariah Carey on the uh, speakers half the damn time. I oh, mean, there's a reason. Mariah. There's a reason why you know there's all those memes out there about Mariah Carey and thawing because it's about that time. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as November hits, it's time. You don't even get Thanksgiving. You don't even get fall. You get Mariah Carey because she's all she wants for Christmas is you. So well. Uh, actually, I meant to mention this in an entirely different video, and we're going to talk about it in that video, but just, just uh, for a brief little side discussion here, I think they are making strides to make Thanksgiving just more of a, a known, like, quantity, because we are getting the movie Thanksgiving, uh, which, for whatever it's worth, those of you watching out there, it's going to be a graphically violent horror movie in the vein of Halloween. So, I'm really looking forward to that. But anyway... Back to not so gruesome topics. So, uh, you, uh, like I said, if you're going to open them, you know, you got to make that decision. Now, uh, as far as like the the optimal like price per brick count, it was ten cents per brick, and to the best of my knowledge, that's still what it is. So, as Jim mentioned, the set has six hundred some odd pieces. So, depending on what else is with it, because uh, I've only got the back of the box here, but I think I can see a lot of it. Uh, it would have been somewhere between sixty and seventy dollars. Sometimes you get a little above. You know, if it's like six hundred ten, six hundred twenty pieces, it might fall down to six hundred. Sometimes it bumps up if there's like a lot of figures in it or a larger deluxe figure of some kind. And this one specifically having the Lego Chima Chima figures, uh, they're kind of a specialty figure. It's a very unique. So there is a little bit of it, you know. Which is why I probably should sell this at some point because the kids don't really care about it. Uh, because the figures, I know there's some people that are diehard Lego, Lego Chima fans, but oh, I, I have some Chima sets that I bought just for the figures. Um, this one, uh, this one actually came from I believe Marshalls. It was either Marshalls or like a TJ Maxx, yeah, one of those kinds of stores. Uh, which I don't know if it's just because of those stores, but th- that's like one of the few places I've seen where they have like all the French translations, like like the or the French hmm. language on the side. Yeah, hard to say. Or the Spanish, too, I guess, too. But, uh, yeah, so this, now, 
also get into something we're going to address a little bit more later here. By virtue of the fact that the Chima set, that might have price might have been lower because Chima is a Lego theme. It's not it's not a licensed theme like Star Wars. This is a this is a Lego original theme, so they're not paying a licensing fee for this. But there is a theme. I believe there was a cartoon or something to go along with this. Yeah, uh, that Lego had produced. And their their long running one is Ninjago, uh, but this was another attempt, and uh, this lasted several waves. So this kind of worked. Uh, but anyway, so I think a little bit better than Nexo Knights did. I don't know. Nexo Knights had awesome sets though. I'm not saying they didn't. I'm just saying as far as lasting. Yeah. yeah, I think there were three waves of Nexo Knight sets, maybe four. Yeah, I think Chima did last longer. Uh, so, if you're going, but if that's what we just said, it has a lot to do with, like, if you're just buying the bulk pieces, you're going to get it way better than $0.10 cents per piece. Like I mentioned, 1800 for $50. I can't quite do math at the moment, so I can't tell you what that is, but that's way better than $0.10 cents per piece, I can tell you that. Well, that well, eighteen hundred pieces would be a hundred and eighty dollars set under that logic. So, hundred eighty dollars worth of stuff for fifty dollars. Well, that and I think even a better way, if, you know, if you need to buy pieces, is if you have access to the Lego store, the the wall of bricks. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So, if you're going to buy specific sets, however, then you've got a whole like rabbit hole of questions you got to ask yourself. Are you, like, an adult collector who only wants, like, the high-end adult sets? And yes, they are adult sets. No kids are getting these sets for these prices in all likelihood, or not very many are. Yeah. Uh, and places like Walmart and Target have started to carry more of these. These will be sets like their high-end Star Wars sets that are really detailed or just really big or both, which also means they're really expensive. Uh, there are... A lot of uh, flower sets now that are like you, you, what you're building is like a scale replica of flowers. And uh, those are more on the adult end. Uh, I think a lot of those you get a pretty good deal on the price per parts, uh, but that's because there's a ton of tiny parts in them. Well, and I, and I think a lot of that is because the stigmata of stigma, what, stigma. stigma whatever. Yeah, stigma. Sorry, the, my, my... The, the st- stigmata is from the Catholic Church. Yes, stigma. Sorry, my my English ain't always so good. Um, I'm just a I'm just a poor American boy. Um, the uh, stigma with Legos is that you know a lot of times is that they were meant for kids. I mean, obviously a set like this is going to appeal to kids, but I think a lot of that has changed. So you know, people that are starting to get into this is because they grew up with you know obviously grew up with Legos, and honestly, I, like I don't even see it any different than like putting together a puzzle. Yeah, it's, it, it's it's essentially a 3D puzzle that then, if you really want to, you can play with it. And there's nothing wrong with that, too, as an adult. If you want to go, pew, pew, here comes my TIE fighter moving in, you know. Yes. Darth Vader. Yes, for what it's worth, that characteristic is known as swoosh ability. That's a technical term, folks. Well, and that's one thing that the uh, US, UCS sets do not have. No, no, the UCS Falcon has zero swoosh ability. <laughs> well, I'll say it, even the... Um, the Star Destroyer, but because uh, if you can, have, first of all, if you can lift it and not have it fall apart on you, you're talented. But I've seen a few people chuck those off of a balcony. Wow. Because people are like, I have money just to throw out, you know, throw everywhere. Yeah, I guess. Must be nice. <laughs> well, that's like the Lego Death Star sitting upstairs. It's, I don't think the kids have even played with it. They put it together and it's just, it's up there. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of these things, you know, like something like that, yeah, I don't really know what you're going to do with it. Like the Chima sets here, you know, like they've got vehicles. Yeah. You know, the castle sets, you've got castles, guys invading the castle. You know, the city sets, you know, you've got car chases and stuff like that. There's things you can do with some of them. So, anyway. <laughs> Get uh, off topic, so. So, say you're going to actually build them. So now you got to decide, what theme am I going with? Or are you sticking with one theme? Or are you just buying whatever? What are you doing? So, way back in the day, uh, we're going to talk about the late 70s to early 80s here briefly, because that's when the modern minifigures showed up, and uh, when the Lego sets took on a lot of the characteristics that we know them for now. Uh, Now, the sets were simpler, I will say that, but there were three primary uh, themes that that existed. 
There was town, which eventually became city, castle, and space. And then, as time went on, certain developments occurred in each of them, and there were sub-themes began to develop. Like in the castle theme, uh, initially there were what would have become known as the Crusaders, is what people call them now. Uh, the guys that have like a lion emblem on their shields and on their uh, on their chest, and also the group that has like the two axes crossed over. They just kind of got lumped in with them. And then there were the Black Falcons, and we only know they're called that because of a set called the Black Falcon Fortress. Uh, the Lion Knights, the Crusaders. I don't think ever actually got a set that called them that. That's just what everyone calls them. And then you have the Robin Hood guys show up. I think they're Forest Men is what they called them. And then as time went on, new factions came in, and so sub-themes kept developing throughout. Because and, Space did the same thing, because they had the... Yeah, Space initially had what is now known as Classic Space, although at the time, obviously, it wasn't because it was new. Uh, but then there was a change in how uh, the figures looked, and uh, it, it, then, then at that point, it actually had a specific name. It's called Futuron. And then after Futuron uh, was... Blacktron and the Space Police and several others. But the initial figures, uh, the main way you can tell them is their helmets are open. Like, there's no there's no visor, no nothing. You're just supposed to imagine that it's closed. Uh, but so you can see their face. And then with the Futurons, they introduced the visors for the helmets. And so from that point forward, the Space People have visors for the helmets. But the initial classic ones do not. Yeah, uh, Benny from the Lego movie would be... Yes, yes, Benny from the Lego movie, only their helmets are not broken right here on the chin strap. Benny's is just to denote that that does happen because it's very thin plastic right there. So, uh, and they ha- and they all have the same emblem on their chest. Uh, Benny is a blue space guy. There were also white, black, yellow, and red. Now, since then, either intentionally or through combinations of parts becoming available, there are also now purple, pink, orange, gray... And green, but the green, you have to use a Futuron helmet. They haven't released the old helmet for the green. So, because it came in a set with like the original body, but they gave it the Futuron helmet. So, I don't know. Uh, so, anyway, about, I'm going to ballpark it 15 years ago, Lego started releasing sets that clearly were meant for adults. Uh, part of the big initial push was, I believe, the. Uh, high-end modular buildings for the city sets because normally in city and a lot of a lot lot of lego sets are not to scale at all there's a certain scale they use and i don't know what it is but they're not really close to scale with the minifigures so buildings like for town uh like a two-story building would be basically the height of this box okay and or actually probably shorter and there'd be no back on the building it'd be kind of like a dollhouse uh, in fact, a lot like a dollhouse. And so it's only the front facade and then some interior stuff. And, like, there's hardly ever a staircase leading up to the second floor. You just got to imagine how people actually get up there and things like that. Teleportation. Well, then, yeah. Well, then they released these high-end buildings that were, like, 2,000-plus pieces, super detailed. Uh, although the first few of the interiors, I'm given to understand, are a little, a little light. But later ones, the interiors are fully fleshed out. And they're usually three or four floors, and the floors are designed such that you can lift the entire floor up to see the interior because of the way it's built. You know, I should just go and grab the set that I have. I've got it in the other room. Oh, that's all right. Because I've got the Lego bank, and that's exactly how the Lego bank is. is it's yeah. three floors, and even then, like, there's a chimney that goes down through all the floors because the idea is that you can break into the bank through the chimney. Yeah. So, um if I was smarter, I would have thought about oh, that. That's, that's all right, Jim. I uh, can't read minds, though. I didn't know. But uh, but all these buildings are also designed to connect to each other. So, like, the idea is, and they come out one per year, but the idea is you buy each one and build a city street with them. And every so often there's a corner building. That's the end of one street. Then the next year will be another corner to begin the next street. And you just keep on going. Or you go around and make a block or something. No. There was a set recently that they released, and again, I have it sitting right in there, the uh, Daily Bugle, which is not is both a, a, uh, a Marvel set, but also is designed in a way that it would fit in with the city theme as well, because it's a completely enclosed building. And even some of the play features, like the exploding front, has it where you can 
yeah. close the front off, but it's the exact same thing being a skyscraper. So it's kind of a neat, a neat build because it's both Marvel set and could fit into you know. There's, there's a fair chance that's purely a coincidence. But I don't know about that. I, I say that because I have a couple others that are clearly like the same level of detail and everything, but do not fit. Like they they were like that was never a concern whenever they made those. Like that that one maybe it's a later set maybe it was, but I'm just saying. I wouldn't count on it because, for the most part, they don't like to cross the streams. I don't care. So, I, I wouldn't mind having the Daily Bugle on my. Well, I'm not saying it wouldn't fit. Like from what, you, from what you're saying, it would. But I've got like uh, I have the the haunted house, and it's the same con- It's the same scale. It's the same level of detail, but it would not fit yeah. in those. Well, yeah, no. I mean, one, it's a skyscraper. Unless so you're making the street from Paperboy, I guess. I mean. I guess I like, one, it's a skyscraper versus most of those are like buildings in a small town. Like they're two stories, maybe three, but not not skyscraper type. Right. Uh and plus, you know, the skyscraper, like some of the offices are only that big. And it's just like one floor is just one office. No stairs. Yeah. Again, you just have to imagine how they get there. Yeah, well, I mean that's kind of a thing with They got the they got up the fire scrape. That's how they get it there. There you go. Uh so, if you're going down the purely adult collector route, there are plenty of options. Uh, then if you want to go with just like the standard sets, then you have a lot of options. And uh, so like at the moment, now this is not going to be an exhaustive list. So at the moment, if you're to walk into a store to buy them, you would have City, which is the offshoot of town, which now also has its own sub-themes of like the police department, fire department, the airport, the hospital, just generic buildings, and uh, they usually throw something else in, like, right now, I think, is the, uh, like, the Arctic exploration stuff that all falls under city, even though you're, even though it has nothing to do with the city. City is essentially, like, contemporary, is what it really means. Well, because they, they had forest set there for a while, too, right? Yeah, they had the forest sets, although those were largely, like, police sets, but yeah, they were, there was a whole, like, forest theme. Uh, they have occasional farm sets. A few years ago, they had a whole bunch of them all at once, so you could actually, like, build a farm. Now they're just sporadic here and there. So now you can just buy the farm. Yes. And then, uh, and that's also something that you get occasionally, is that, like, like City in particular, uh, you'll have, like, a tractor come out one year. And, like, a year later, like, a combine. And, like, a year later, like, a farmhouse. You know, there'll be just sporadic bits and pieces here and there. And then one year it'll be like, all right, well, here's all that stuff plus three more sets to actually just make a farm. So you, you get that, and that's mainly, you get that a lot with City. Uh, mainly because the other two evergreen themes of town, of Castle and Space don't exist half the time. No. Uh, once Star Wars came along as a theme, Space pretty well died because it was going to be direct competition for the theme that they were paying a lot of money. Yeah, speaking of that, there is one thing that I noticed with the with the one space at Benny's spaceship. That thing's an enigma to me because I've never seen that thing marked down. Like it's, you said it was marked down at one point for a little bit, but then it's always. Are you, are you talking about the one that's available right now? Yes, the hundred dollars set. Okay, well, that's not Benny's spaceship. Well, it's that's the, the, there was a set for Benny's spaceship. Uh, yeah, sorry. It, uh, the one you're talking about is a, is an update to I think it's the Galaxy Explorer. That was an old set. This is like a bigger, newer version of it. And to your point, for a long time, it was $75 versus 100 Yeah. And then there was one day, like like Black Friday or something, I don't remember which day it was, for like a matter of hours, it was $50 if you bought it online. And I think the price matched in the store. This is at Walmart. It's a Walmart exclusive. And then after that, it went back to 75 then back to 100 and it's been there ever since. And that was like... Nine, ten months ago. And I just see them all over the place. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every, place, every store that has them has a bunch of them because they had a big display. And now they've just got them. And I know what's going to happen is one day I'm going to walk in there. I'm going to see a tag that says $50, and they're all going to be gone. Yeah, that, that, that's one of those enigmas. And it just, But it, to your point, it shows why the space set doesn't work. Because people would pay money for that, but they wouldn't pay 100 bucks for it. Well, I think there they wouldn't pay hundred bucks because they knew it was seventy five. Well, I wouldn't pay hundred bucks. I wouldn't pay seventy five. I'll wait till it's on clearance. I don't want to. Well, that bad. yeah, that, that's you though. 
I mean, I got my space police set. I'll just keep that. Space police set. Which one do you have? Uh, the police station. It's one of them. It's got a guardhouse. It's got a couple of towers that go along with it. No. I believe it has a helicopter landing pad. I don't know why you have that in space, but... I'm going to see this later. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, you got that. Then you got like your, your big themes of Star Wars... Well, Star Wars is the biggest theme. Uh, at the moment, you still have Harry Potter. Uh, you don't have any sets in the main stores, but there is a Lord of the Rings set that's out at the moment. Uh, it's one of the high-end adult sets. It's like 400 and some odd dollars. It's uh, Rivendell. Then you have uh, Ninjago, which that's one of Lego's own themes. And so that's that one's very expansive. Uh, if you like giant mechs, that's what a lot of those sets are, or whatever version of the ship. The, the Destiny's Bounty is out this time. It seems like every wave has a bunch of robots. The Destiny's Bounty, maybe some cars, or some jets, and then like some kind of wacky bad guys. Yeah, that's not Space Police. Oh, so it's, it's... it's colored like them. I can see why you think that. Because, oh, you're right. the, because of the green glass from the Space Police too, but uh, yeah. I don't know. So, I can't remember that's a set I had as a child. Sure. <laughs> so anyway, my, my point is, there's a lot of variety at the moment, uh, but uh, kind of expanding on that, if you go into a Walmart, because that's going to be the most common place to find these. I believe there are more WalMarts than Targets. Otherwise, I'd say Target. You go into a Walmart. The size of the Walmart will determine the size of the Lego aisle. Like, for instance, from where we're sitting right now, there are two Walmarts within 20 miles of us. One of them is larger than the other one, and therefore has a larger Lego section. And what that means is they have more different sets. They don't just, like, double up. Like, a larger store will carry different sets than a smaller store. And uh, we're going to talk about more of this in the other video, but that also determines some elements of their clearance. Uh, because a smaller store still has to carry the larger sets. They just have a lot less shelf space, so whenever it comes time to rotate, they clearance the larger sets out faster, because they've got to get them out of there to get the new ones in. Whereas a larger store, they might have sold out of some, and they've got shelf space to work with. So, just one little detail there. Uh, but anyway... So because of that, if you go into a smaller Walmart, uh, they might not have like an entire wave. Like say we're looking, say we're, this is back when, we were, let's say five years ago when Archimo was, well it's more than five, like ten years ago when Archimo was on the shelves. Uh, like one Walmart might not necessarily have all the sets in that wave of sets. You might have to go to another store to find some of the other sets. And that's before you get into store exclusives, which those are definitely a thing. Uh and those could be for Walmart, those could be for Target, those could be, uh, there are sets that only Lego sells. They don't sell them at lesser stores. They'll either sell them through their catalog, online, or through their stores. Now, that's not to say you couldn't find them someplace else, because, like, people do sell them. And so, like, you have, if your town is large enough that there is a dedicated Lego store, but not the Lego store, like a, someone else owns it, not Lego then you can easily find them there too, I suppose, because those people go to the Lego store and buy the exclusives, bring them back to their store and mark them up. And they're hoping you don't know how to drive across town. Yeah. And the, the other thing with, with that is that there are certain Lego sets that, and I've got at least one or two of them where say you go into the Lego store and you sign up for their VIP membership, you buy, you know, X amount of Legos, they give you points for it. And then you yes. can use that towards Exclusive sets they don't even sell that are just for VIP members. Right. And then there are also, to, uh, to Jim's point, uh, you want to watch or uh, you just want to pay attention to what's coming out on that front because there will also be sets that you get for just spending a certain amount of money. You'll just get free sets. Now, don't think they're giant sets like this. Usually a little what's called a poly bag, which is a plastic bag set. And at retail, they're normally like $5. But... Some of them are exclusive, like 
I had one of, uh, of all it was, was a single miniature inside of Darth Revit. And I sold it for like 300 some odd dollars when I finally got around to selling it. Because Darth Revan was never in her mainline set. It was only in the poly bag, only available during like one weekend. Like I want to say it's one of the May the 4th things, which we'll talk about that in part two of this. Like there are certain times of the year, certain areas to look for these things. Uh, so, you know, exclusives. Uh, but like right now, at this particular moment, there is a, a Creator 3-in-1 set, which I haven't talked about those. Um, unlike, say, a set like this, the Creator 3-in-1 sets, it's like it says. You can build three different models with it, and you're going to spare parts no matter which one you build. Um, but the directions have three different models you can build out of the parts that are available in the box. Now, that's not three different models all at once. You have enough parts to build one of them, but you pick which one. And obviously, since they're Lego, you can take them back apart and build the others if you want to. Yeah, well, and that's the one that my my youngest son, Grant, that's his thing. He loves to do. He'll build a set in one of the creator sets. He'll build it immediately. As soon as he's done, take it apart, build a second one. And the one that that comes to mind that he has that he's built as three in one is the shark set. It's a shark. You can turn it into a, um, I believe, a, a squid of some sort. You can turn it into something else. But Lego also then offers a fourth option where you can download off their website a manual to build a fourth item. And this there one was this that's, one was a whale. Cool. Yeah, it was a whale. So I've that's something I'll have to show maybe in the next video where it's got the three instruction booklets, but then the fourth one is when I print it off where it has the instructions yeah. to build a whale. So pretty cool. So uh, right now is something I've not ever seen before. There is an exclusive three in one set to Target. But it's the same set with different coloration, which now, now that I say it, I think I have one other time there was a set like that, but I never actually saw them in stores. So this is a, it's a tropical bird, and the main one that you would find like at Walmart, you'd also find the main one at Target, is uh, the body of the bird is blue, whereas in the Target exclusive version, the bulk color is uh, like a dark pink, and it's more, it's a far more colorful. But that also means that the two alternate models are different colors as well because you, you have the same pool of blocks. Uh, and like I said, I just I can only think of one other time, and I, just right off the top of my head, I can't even think of what the set was. But uh, usually you don't see that. Usually what it'll be is like, okay, like right now, the uh, like I said, the Arctic Explorers are a thing. The last round of Arctic Explorers set, Target had an exclusive set. It's a very large set in Airplane. I wish I would have gotten a hold of that one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but normally it would just be like another set in one of the other themes or sub-themes that just isn't available elsewhere. Uh, or kind of like you also get combo boxes sometimes. Like right now at Walmart, there's a Star Wars combo box that's the Hoth ATST, as Star Wars from Hoth ATST, and the uh, Imperial Soldiers uh, box. Collectively at retail, those would be seventy dollars, fifty for the ATST and twenty for the soldiers. Now the ATST is on sale for forty dollars a lot of places, a lot of times. But buy, but if you just bought them straight, it'd be seventy dollars. This one box that has both sets is forty five dollars. Like it's a hell of a deal. And there's another one that I saw at a Walmart, but they haven't restocked them yet. Uh, and it was like I think the tractor, the most recent one, is a twenty dollars set. And this $20, like, construction set, together in one box, or $20. I mean, it's literally half price, as long as you can live with the fact that it's one box instead of two. And on the collecting front, these combo boxes, they don't make a hell of a lot of them. Usually it's like, once they're done, they're done. They don't restock a lot of times. And they're usually only for one store, like these are for Walmart. It literally says Walmart on the box. So post-Christmas, and probably way before Christmas... These will be gone, and on the aftermarket, if you're looking to sell, they will increase in value, uh, which Star Wars does in general, but these will specifically because of the combo boxes, and it's just a harder-to-find version of the sets. Even though it's the exact same pieces and everything, it's just for the collectors that do keep them in the boxes, it's a, it's a unique thing. Like, I've got a, I've got a Toys R Us exclusive set still in the box, uh, and it was kind of like what I mentioned with the 3-in-1. It was a it was a delivery truck 
the main one is, is yellow with red accents, and it was a Lego truck. Well, different Lego boxes. Well, this one's white and blue with a Toys R Us logo on the side, and if it's for Toys R Us, it's only available at Toys R Us, which now doesn't exist anymore in the United States. No. I I, I, yeah, yeah, they're bringing them back, I, I heard, and they do still exist in other countries. Uh, and yeah, Toys R Us used to get exclusives. Toys R Us used to be, and I'm going to talk more about this in the other video, but Toys R Us used to actually be, when you timed it right, the place to buy in bulk. Now, you don't want to buy there normally because they were above retail price, but they would have sales for like buy one, get one half off or buy two, get one free. And as long as you bought the right sets, it was definitely worth your while. But that's not the case at the moment. So, you know, that's, that's tales from the days of yore. And uh, that's where I would buy like multiple castle sets to just build one gigantic castle. So just to get the bricks and the soldiers. Uh but yeah, so you've got all kinds of themes to choose from. But like I said, most stores won't have the entire theme. Uh, they will for some of them, but they won't have for all of them just because there's limited shelf space. So like, uh, just as a comparison, right now at the Walmarts I've been to lately, they've only got like two or three of the Arctic Explorers set. Target has all of them. And I don't know why, because the Target closest to us has a far smaller Lego section than even the small Walmart near us. But they've got all of that. And they have more of the high-end sets. It's the stuff in between they have less of. So, you know, take that for what you will. Uh, but the Lego store should have all of it. Because that's all they carry. And uh, the Lego store also does run specials. Uh, to Jim's point, you get the free sets. You get double points on things. Uh, they do clearance sets. Uh, now, their clearance won't go very far. Because I think... Once they start hitting a certain point, they just send them to other stores. Or if people call in an order, they will take that store's inventory instead if, that, if the other store is empty. Something like that. Someone, one of the employees explained it to me one time. But, uh, so you won't find things very cheap there. But you can find, you know, 25, 35%, you know, if it's a set on its way out, that's doable. But you won't see a lot of them. That's definitely one of the stores where when they ask, do you want to be a VIP member, you want to yes. say yes, yes. Because you get points. You can... Buy Legos with it. It's, you it's buy Legos. You can turn them into a discount, uh, like five, ten, twenty dollars off, whatever. Um, Exclusive yeah. sets, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, that's one of the few that I can say that when they asked if you want to be a VIP member, I'm like, yes. Even though I don't go very often, I still have at least two. Uh, I actually have their VIP set, which is like a VIP background with a red minifig. Yeah, I I meant to get that one. And then the other one is the Lego store. Uh, it's it's not very tall, but it's about like that. But it's like two stories, but it's like a miniature Lego store. I don't think it's even to minifig scale, but it's yeah. it's neat. I mean, we got it for free. I didn't pay anything for it. So so uh, there are also other exclusives that are like just absurdly hard to get. Like there was some airline that had some exclusive sets for a while. The uh, Merrick. There's uh, there's the the Maersk stuff. Uh, yes. The shipping Maersk. company. Uh, the Maersk actually owns. The light blue color that they use. So there's like three Lego sets that are Maersk sets that are the only three sets you can get bricks in that color. It's the train, the ship, and something. I think it's a truck. Uh, didn't buy one of them because I'm apparently a fool. I should have bought the train for sure because I have other trains. Um, and uh, I'll talk about the trains here in just a second. So uh, you've got, like I said, you got the adult stuff. you got the other themes. Uh, as far as exclusives, this is... The other, like, silly hard-to-find ones, there's some that they only sell in Billund in Denmark, because that's where the company headquarters is, and there is what's called the Lego House. And there's a set of the Lego House. That's the only place you can buy it. Yeah, I think that also, there, I guess, that for people that took tours out there, that there were tour exclusive sets. There's that would tour be... exclusives. There's employee exclusives that you get, like, for working there at the end of the year, and a couple of those are pretty cool, too. So there, there's exclusives all over the place for Lego. Okay, uh, there's probably stuff exclusively at the Disney parks because they sell them there. Uh, there might be ones that specifically for the Mall of America store. I've never, I've not been to it, but I hear there's this giant one there in the Mall of America. Yep, I've and I actually have been there. Uh, fun fact is that that was where uh, Jingle All the Way uh, when Arnold's crashing through the uh, Lego store. Oh yeah, is filmed in the Mall of America. So at least uh, at least that's what I. Uh, Jingle All the Way. That was one of my. 
to two movies at the theater day, the other being Space Jam. And I came away thinking Space Jam was the greatest movie ever made after watching Jingle All the Way first. But, uh, Jingle All the Way is is what it is. It's, it's, a, not, it's, it's not a Christmas movie. It's not a terrible movie. But, it's a Christmas movie. Yeah. So, uh, so you got the exclusives. And then, uh, like Jim mentioned earlier, the Lego stores have a unique feature as far as like official ways to get Lego. Uh, in that they have a wall of Lego bricks. Now, I don't mean it's a wall made out of Lego bricks. It's a wall that has a bunch of containers that have Lego bricks in them. Mm-hmm. And you buy it by, like, cups. It's like a small cup that's, you know, about, uh, I want to say about the size of a coffee cup, a little bit wider, but about that high. And then one that's about the size of a large McDonald's cup, give or take. And you pay a flat rate, then whatever you can jam in there. And a little pro tip on that. If you're going to go this route, put the blocks together. Don't just dump them in there. Snap them together. You'll get almost twice as much in there. Now, that's unless we're talking a little like one by one, like squares and round pieces, just dump those in there. Once you have the blocks, then dump those in there and start filling in all the little gaps and shake the cups to get them all down in there. All kinds of little tricks. If you go online, people have actually figured out like how to build the blocks in layers. Like, let's go sideways to, to deal with the fact the cup, you know, gets wider at the top and everything. And there's, there's instructions on how to do it. And That's funny. I, I, I could, I could I've never that. gone that far. I usually build a core set of blocks that goes down all the way. And then inside of those, and dump all kinds of tiny pieces around them. Uh, so anyway, you can fit hundreds of pieces in those larger cups. And definitely buy the large ones, don't buy the small ones. The small ones are trash. Uh, it's like half the price of the large one, but it's less than half the size. So definitely just buy the large ones. Uh, also, there's a little space up in the lid. Fill that too. So you can fit like a, you can fit uh, two two by fours and then two more stacked on top, making a cube. You can jam that up in there, and then you can still snap the lid closed. And in some stores, you don't even have to be able to snap the lid closed. You just have to get it mostly closed because they will tape it closed because of the fact that they know how jam packed. Uh, and they also have uh, build-a-figure sections there in the stores where they've got a bunch of figure parts like legs, torsos, heads, and accessories. And you get a you get a thing that you can fit three figures in for a set price. I think it's $10, like $9.99. Uh, and each one you get, you can have, you know, the head, the torso, the legs, one headgear, and one accessory for each figure. And usually there's parts that obviously go together. I've got a couple of castle figures that, that obviously the three the, the pieces all went together. I just picked different yeah. heads for them so there'd be variety. Um, so yeah, those are the those are the kind of fun things you get at the Lego store. You also see a lot of sets that just you know just aren't sold anyplace else, uh, like the keychains and the mugs and all that kind of stuff. The paraphernalia that's not actually Lego sets. Um, then they'll have sets that only Lego sells. You know those. Yeah, the weirdest one I've seen seen recently was where you can build an Adidas shoe. Yeah, they they've been <laughs> like you know so, some of the things that come up with lately. I'm just like, okay. I mean, sure. I, I do like the Nintendo 64 set. I say that because it's the the, uh, the Mario 64 set where it's like the different levels of Mario 64 built into a cube. That was pretty cool. The Adidas shoe, I never, I don't understand the appeal of it. Not me, but hey, you know, if that's your thing, you know, if you're a big shoe collector, I guess it's kind of cool. Yeah, there's a whole there's a whole subculture there that I do not understand at all. But, like, I, uh, most people don't understand what I collect, so I'm not, like, throwing shade on them here or anything. No, but, no, but I mean, it, it, I mean, they've got it for everybody, so it's not one of those, like, oh, I don't like Star Wars, I don't like this. I mean, you like The Hobbit? I mean, they, you know, the Lord of the Rings, they've got that. You like Harry Potter? They've got that. Well, speaking of for everybody, there are also sets that are geared more towards girls. Uh, even though even though Lego is technically gender neutral, the Lego company realized a long time ago that the sets primarily appeal to boys. Yeah, I mean, and, like, and they've made several attempts to crack that code to get girls interested, and they all failed until the current one, which is called the Friends line. Which, uh, for whatever it's worth, I think is a lot of Friends sets. That actually, like they're just good sets, period, and they're the same scale to work with the other minifigures. So if you do see one, you're like, oh, I'd want that, but I don't know if it'll work. They do work together. 
they're the same the same height, same scale as far as like doorways and all that kind of stuff. But the figures in the friend sets look more like dolls. I think they even call them mini dolls. This is the result of Lego spending, I think it's like five years, a whole lot of money, and lots and lots of intense research to figure out why girls weren't interested in Lego sets and how to get them interested. And they came to a very interesting conclusion, which probably explains a whole bunch of other things in the world, but we'll back off on that for now. We'll wait till we talk about Captain Marvel or something to get into that debate. Uh, apparently, whenever boys play with toys, like say a boy's playing with a Batman figure, he imagines himself as Batman. He doesn't imagine that, he doesn't imagine he's little Timmy running along. He imagines that he, little Timmy, is Batman. And if he's seen the movies, you know, oh, Batman, you know, stuff like that, you know, or for Wolverine or whatever. Girls apparently don't do that. They project themselves onto the character. So for them, it's a matter of, no, this doll is me, not I'm the doll, you know. So it's, it's, it doesn't sound like it's different, but it is tremendously different. And so that's why uh, they're less interested in, like, some action figures and stuff and more prefer dolls because dolls can be customized be more like them and so the little mini dolls they have a huge variety so that you know girls can pick at least one of them and like literally see themselves in it like that's me and you know then go about their day you know playing with all the other figures and everything so that was a big a big step forward for them and the friends line has been going for i'm gonna say 10 years now at least and so it's been going pretty strong like it beats the hell out of paradisa like the other attempts back in the day but uh, I did notice that, like, the last two waves of those have, like, really stepped up their game in terms of construction. And in general, I mentioned the high-end city sets earlier, the modular buildings. There's a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of not, not the details, but it's, it's a whole lot of uh, construction methods as far as how to apply detail to Lego sets. Because way back in the day, there's a lot of flat, smooth walls. You'd have windows, you'd have doors. But Lego has looked at what people outside of Lego are doing to spice things up and are incorporating those ideas into the Lego sets. And the first rooms to really do that were the modular buildings. But you're starting to see that in smaller and smaller sets now. So just like some of the, just the regular city sets are a lot more detailed than they used to be, there's a couple of friend sets that are far more detailed than I ever thought just a regular set that the yeah. store shelf would be. And uh, also something that I see in a current couple friend sets, some Lego sets are designed to combine together. Okay, like like in the Harry Potter line right now, they keep making different parts of the castle. And even though there's not like a picture on the back to show you how they all go together, they're designed on their edges with uh, pins and cylinders to click them all together to make a larger castle. And the old castle sets actually used to do that too. And then there's a current, uh, there's a friend set right now. It's like a cafe or something, and it has like a rooftop part. Then there's another friend's building that's like a four-story tall building, and they're made to put together. So, like, you take the cafe top off the first one, and it becomes the ground floor of the larger building once you put the other four stories onto it. Then the cafe part becomes like a park next to it. So nice. it looks pretty cool when it's all together. And, uh, yeah, so see, like, the friend stuff, like, you know, it's a little more colorful, but, like, a lot of them are really well-done buildings, so. But, yeah, so there's, there's something for everybody there, you know. Well, it made me think of another topic at some point we'll have to talk about, and that is the actual failed Lego sets, the ones that, like, the, I, I'm trying to think of the Galdor, Gal, Gal, Galador, yes. that was one, um. But if that's something, I can say, if that's, a t- you know, we can talk about that topic. But if yeah. that's something you guys want to hear about, I mean, it's a very fun, interesting well, if, topic. if we go down that route, I have some pictures of, like, sets that never were. Like, they're yeah. going to release them. Uh, because, like I said, the three evergreen themes, in theory, were town, castle, and space. Well, a fourth one came along eventually. Pirates. And somewhere in there, they were like, well, what about, like, say... French Revolution area where we have kind of castly stuff, but we also have the guns from the pirates, but they're like Three Musketeers era. There was like a whole thing planned out for that that just never got released. There's pictures people have of them. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Then uh, 
you probably won't. I don't know if Lego makes these anymore, but Lego used to make books of instructions. And they had these huge layout pictures of like all kinds of other things you could build to inspire you to build them. And uh, but there then be instructions for certain parts. And I've got a couple of them, but I think they stopped making them a while ago. I know I know other people make books that you can find on Amazon, uh, and you can find all kinds of articles online about how to do detail work. Like you want to know how to make certain little elements in a castle, for instance. If you can't just like picture it in your mind and figure it out. There's certain sites to go to that tell you, like, here's how you make uh, you know, this kind of crenellation and things like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, you've got a. Uh, those are some things that used to exist. There, there are still Lego books, although I think most people buy them for the free figure that's in them. Yeah. But like, like there's one right now that has an orange classic spaceman. I haven't bought it yet, but I need to because I need that orange spaceman. The book, maybe there's something in it worthwhile. I don't know. Give it to a kid. I could do that. But yeah. Uh, oh, the trains. We're going to mention the trains. Uh, trains, you're not likely to see in a regular store. Uh, I've seen the train tracks in a Target. And maybe one of the trains. But it seems like every year, every other year, Lego has a couple train sets. And they'll make a passenger train and a cargo train. They'll sell the track by itself. It might make a train crossing. Uh, unfortunately, this is nowhere near what they used to make. They used to have, you'd have your two, your, your cargo and your passenger train. You'd be able to buy individual train cars. You could buy uh, certain kinds of tracks. Like right now, uh, I think the main tracks are the straight tracks, the curved tracks. And there's a switch set where you literally flip a switch and your train can go like off on a different track. And then another one to bring it back. And then there are some that have a pivot in the middle, so you can so you can snake the tracks however you want. Uh, but there's other pieces they used to make, like there's a cross track where it's two tracks crossing like an X. You cannot do that with the current tracks in any way, shape, or form because they can't go across each other. Yeah. But that piece used to exist, and uh, there was actually a group who uh, uh, went on a Kickstarter and made a whole bunch of things like that. And so they're unofficial, but they do work. Yeah, well, and I think in capacity of if you have the Lego train set, you have the Lego train pieces, and you just need a couple of those special pieces, I don't think that's a, a bad thing. It's, it'd yeah. be like, oh, well, I need this. They don't make it. I'm going to find somebody that does. Yeah, and uh, with the trains, and this, this is we're talking about collecting, I'm going to mention this, uh, but these are not things you're going to currently find. Right now, the trains work on remote control. So the tracks are just plastic. Prior to this, they had metal in them because you actually electrified the whole track. Uh, it, was, it was a nine volt, you know, had a control panel that you clip onto the track at some point. So the newer trains can work on the older track because they just need the track. Yeah. And it's the same size. But the older trains cannot work on the newer track because they can't, you can't power the motor on it. You have to change it out for a new motor. And I don't know if they're the same size, so you might have to actually totally overhaul the engine car. So the original ones were actually more like model trains. Yes, and then prior to those were ones that were like even more like model train-y. I've only seen them at one convention. I didn't even know they existed until I saw them. And a lot of what this guy had was custom stuff just because they didn't make the parts. Yeah. And he had wires going everywhere, and it looked like a mess. Uh, then there's also the monorail system, which had, I believe, only had two sets, maybe three. Uh, there was one for an airport, and then there was uh, one or two for space. And they all use the same setup, but they haven't made those in forever, and they'll have to completely redesign those sets from the ground up, because as I understand it, they don't have any of the parts for them anymore. They should have made one for the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that was one of the few episodes I actually had Leonard Neem. Like, yeah, he's he's in it. At the end of the episode, it's like, oh, my work here is done. Like, what did you do? You didn't do anything. He's like, didn't I? And then just beams out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the, the monorail stuff, if you ever come across that, that stuff is like gold, by the way, because they're people that want it because they use it in gigantic displays. But, uh, anyway, I've got an older 9-volt train, and I have a newer one. Actually, two newer ones uh, because of uh, 
one of the other things and one of the last things we're going to talk about here. Uh, so, you know, there, there's, there's, I, I haven't ever set my, the newer ones up and it's been a long time since I set the old one up. So at some point I got to buy a new engine for the old one so I could actually use it all together if I wanted to. But, uh, anyway, the mention of the trains brings me to the last little chunk. Uh, similar to the, uh, the modulars, which come out every year, there are also Christmas sets that come out every year. And these are, for the most part, meant to be like uh, like a Christmas village. Like if you've ever seen like the little, uh, pottery is not the word I'm looking for here, uh, porcelain, little houses and stuff. Yeah. You see them every year at Walmart. You know, it's, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a setup kind of like that. And uh, so each year they come out with a new set. Like, like the first one was a toy shop, uh, which they eventually remade. And I sold the old one where they made the new one, but then never went around to buying the new one. So right now I'm short a toy shop. That's that's what happens sometimes. Uh, they have like a, like a post office, a bakery, uh, some apartments, just all kinds of things like that. Most of them are meant to go together. Then there's a couple that are like, I don't know what we're doing here. Like, there's like Santa's workshop, then where the elves are, and then like a gingerbread house. Like, those three go together, but they don't really fit in with the others. You know, because the others are like yeah. a town. Yeah. So there's also a Christmas train, which I have. Christmas train station, which I also have. Um, but those, like I said, they come out annually. At any given point in time, Usually the one from the year before is also still available and there'll be a very brief window where the one before that is also available. So there'll be three of them. But typically what happens is that oldest one, once the new one comes out, cause like for this year, yeah, the one for this year is already out. So right now three of them are available, but come black Friday, that oldest one will probably get put on sale if Lego has any inventory left. So, if you want that one, you better jump on it. And that one, I think, is a, is, is a house, but it's got, it doesn't have the back, so it's like Santa Claus coming into the house and everything, you know. The old B&E on Christmas Eve. But uh, the, uh, the, the one from last year, though, I'm going to try to get. I haven't bought it yet. It's uh, kind of a couple buildings in town, but also like a tram. And the wheels for it are the same gauge as the train tracks, and I already have the train and the tracks, so you can make a a, a Christmas collision there of the train and the tram. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now the trolley is so small it doesn't have an engine, so you'd have to actually like manually push it around, or just have the train push it, I suppose, uh, or make it a car on the train if you know how to modify them correctly. Uh, which would really probably just be putting magnets on it. I think that's how they still connect. I know that's how the nine volt ones connected, uh, but. The, uh, then the one for this year that just came out is like a lodge. It's like the ground floor is, you know, looks like it's made out of stone and then wood all the way up from there. Uh, it looks pretty cool. I'm probably going to buy it because I, there's a couple I didn't buy that I kind of wish I did. But those, all of them, once they're off the market, the price takes off like a rocket ship. So because that's the only way to get them after that. You're going to be buying a knockoff on AliExpress, which, you know, we'll talk about that more in the second video. Yeah, because I can... Those, those aren't all bad. Like, you know, I, I'm... I'll, I'll let Jim talk to their... Uh, sing their praises here in a moment, and I'm not going to put them down with what I'm about to say, just to be clear. But I am completely and totally a, uh, like, a purist snob on this front. I don't want other parts mixing with my Lego parts. Okay? Because, like, Mega Blocks, I have a few Mega Block sets them totally separate i've bought like huge lots of uh, bricks from people and i've spent the hours it takes to sift out the non-lego parts because the lego parts generally speaking stick together better the coloration will be the same all the way across and there's a few other th there's a few other reasons like if i'm ever going to sell them i want to be able to say these are all lego parts you know so th those are my reasons for doing it having said all that there's nothing wrong with the sets on AliExpress, you know. Because I and that's that's something maybe in the next video I'll I'll bring one out because my Lego Death Star is an AliExpress set. Yeah, and I've seen it; it looks fine. You know? um, but the, you know, the the reason is is there's a couple things. One, my kids are going to play with it. Yep. They um, the set is not in print anymore, so it's not like you can go and buy this right. set. 
And, you know, so those are the kind of the, the stipulations I look at and say, okay, this is not a set I can get. My kids want it. I can't get it. There you go. Um, the other one, like I said, is the fact that they are going to play with it. You know, you're not going to be worried about losing pieces, stuff like that. Right. You know, if this is going to be, I'm going to put it together, put it on my shelf to display it, then I would see where the Lego purist would come in and be more like, yeah, you don't want to do that. No, mine right now, the Lego Death Star is sitting on the floor upstairs. It's yeah. getting kicked. It's getting stuff. We don't have to worry about it because I didn't pay that much for it. Right. And that is the, that's the final part. They are cheaper. so Considerably. Yeah. Um, the Lego Death Star, I believe, was like $150. Yeah. And it's, even, even when the Lego Death Star is available, it was not $150. <laughs> so it's... Uh, uh, and also, and we'll talk about this a little bit more probably in the other video, but there's also things that Lego has never made that's on AliExpress. You know, like they'll have figures for properties Lego doesn't have the license to, or they'll have more figures from the same properties Lego does have the license to that Lego just hasn't made. Well, you can always put up in the up there the uh, video we had where we built the, uh, the, the two Star Trek ships, yeah, the two Enterprises. Uh, that's not something that they have a license to. Um, for a while there, um, another company did because I still kick myself because I wanted to buy the Vengeance uh, when uh, Toys R Us had it. Yeah, it wasn't even that expensive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then uh, let's say then just one other little kind of note from a from a collector. If you're actually going to be putting these things together, standpoint, uh, don't be suckered in by thinking that you have to just buy like bigger sets. Lego is actually pretty good at putting decent pieces that you want in quantity in large quantities in smaller sets. So yeah. You're only going to get a building this big from this kind of set. But say you just want to, uh, let me take a look at the front of this thing real quick. Say you only just want like things like these cars, like you can buy those and those are like $10 sets or $5 sets if there's only just the one or the little poly bags. But uh, like right now, because I was looking at the store the other day, there's like a little farm tractor. Okay. It's got a guy at the tractor. It's also got like carrot pieces. It's got a, a pre-made tree. It's got a squirrel. It's got a, several parts that like if you were to buy a few of those and then a moderately sized farm set, you could really like populate the farm with a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, you see that like with the Arctic Explorer sets, it's like a snowmobile, but it also comes with like a baby seal and an adult seal. It's got the guy. And realistically, if you've got like your Arctic research station, you probably have more than one snow speed. Uh, yeah, nearby. So you'd want a couple of them, plus it'd give you more of the seals, more figures, more parts. So, like I said, just don't be don't be thinking, oh, I just have to buy the huge things. Like, you can buy a lot of the small things. You just won't necessarily have giant buildings, but you'll have a lot of things to flesh out the buildings you do have. Uh, and you can buy them piecemeal, because you don't have to buy, instead of spending $60 on one of these, you buy a $10 set this week. So you're going to get paid again by another $10 set. They'll be on the store shelves for anywhere from 9 to 18 months, depending on what the sets are. Unless they're exclusives, in which case you might want to buy them whenever you see them because they might not be there the next time you come. Uh, and they don't restock very often. So that's one little thing to consider. They do sell figures individually, the collectible figures. Uh, that's a whole other topic on its own, uh, especially since some recent changes they've made that are really dumb. Yeah, so the poly bag sets, the small sets, the moderate size sets, and then almost every set, maybe even every set, has extra pieces. Okay? Now, any given set, like say you bought two of this set, they will both have the same extra pieces. I'm not saying they're just random extra pieces. They're, they're meant to be in there for a reason. And part of that is Lego wants you to have more parts to fiddle around with to add, to take off, you know, to mess around with, because they they understand that people, that a lot of kids don't just buy this, put this together, and stare at it. They're going to take it apart. They're going to put it back together, kind of. They're going to take another set, parts from that, and put it on there. That's the great thing about these is they're, they're as customizable as is possible here, okay? So those extra parts, you're going to get those with every set, and sooner or later, you're going to have a whole bunch of those just sitting around, too. Like, I've got bags of just the extra bits that have for my sets that I just still haven't sorted out to my other parts yet. So that's definitely a thing. Uh, if you watch the video where I put together the Stormtrooper mech for Star Wars, it had a bunch of extra parts left over. And that's not because I missed steps. They're extra parts. So those do accumulate. 
they're not going to be big things. They're not going to be the big blocks. Okay, they're going to be like flat plates that are decorative or round bits here or, or cylinders. And but they do add up. You know, I say they're not going to be blocks. I might be a one by block in some sets. And uh, I've only ever had one set with a piece missing. And that was back in the early '90s, and it was one piece. And it was like a one by two black plate that I had a thousand of already. But if you are ever missing a piece, on the instructions, there are part numbers. And you can go on the LEGO website and get the part. Yeah, I, I, I've had it one time, and it wasn't a missing piece. It was a uh, rubber tire that was deformed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they um, yeah, they sent me a free tire. Like, I didn't even have to, like, there's like, yeah, I'm just, well, like somebody said, though, like, you could just buy, like, the, the listings and just every, you know, every so often just call and say you're missing a piece. And Well, <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, but I have gone in and bought parts because you can buy them that are exclusive. Like, like there's right now there's a four hundred dollar castle set. It looks awesome, and you know everything works out. Hopefully, I'll actually be able to buy it before it's off the shelves. But just in case, I went in and ordered all the exclusive parts. So just in case I don't get the castle itself, I have the parts that were exclusive to it that you're not gonna be able to find in any other set. And several of them are worth quite a bit of money. Like, Lego's just crazy for selling them like this. I didn't buy them to sell them. I bought them to keep because I love Castle. I have I have my own castle that I have built that's like two and a half feet tall. So, you know, I'm all about the castle stuff. Uh, I'll get some pictures of that sometime to show you. But, uh, or video or something. Probably not video. My room's, my room's an absolute disaster zone. Take a picture so you can't see all the, the carnage. But, uh, yeah. So, that's uh, something else to consider is you can order the parts that way. Now we're going to talk about that more in the second video because except for the exclusive parts, sometimes for the most part, there's a far cheaper option if you're wanting to buy just individual parts. And it's this lovely thing called Bricklink, but I'll explain it in the other video. So anyway, uh, this is all uh, primarily talking about contemporary stuff. Again, since we're going to be talking about BrickLink in the other video, that's where we're going to talk about the more vintage sets, because obviously you can't walk into a store and buy them, but there are places to buy them. And we're going to talk about it's BrickLink, but we're going to talk in depth on that in the second video. So yeah. Uh, oh, I guess there's one other thing I could mention here real quick. Uh, modern sets, the bags are numbered, and the instructions are such like open bag one. Put this part together. Open bag two, put this together. I covered this a little bit in the Lego Stormtrooper mech set when I put together. Older sets don't do that. Older sets are like, here's a bunch of bags. Good luck. And also, like, they're not they're not numbered. They're not like even remotely sequential. The old instructions, I believe, didn't even advise you to sort by color like the new ones do. And uh the old instructions were actually hand drawn, apparently, like the original that they copied, you know, all the, the mass production from. And like in a new set, it'll show you a picture of all the pieces that are going into that step, and then show you where they go. The old instructions are like, "What has changed from step four and step five? How good is your vision?" And you have to be able to figure out what changed all on your own. And a lot of times, there's definitely some times where it's like what is different here? Or like, and you get like a couple steps down the road where it's like, Oh, turned around. And you're like, Oh, so you put these pieces in like three steps ago. I really wish you would have shown me that. Yeah. There's nothing like going, getting a set, like almost done. Then realize that you've missed a step, like all the way back at the beginning. Oh my God, Jim, I put together this, uh, Technic, <laughs> this Technic track crane. Okay. And like in the, in the body of it, you know, it's got this big boom arm and a, and a like a scoop that can do this number. Yeah. Uh, the Technic sets, by the way, I haven't mentioned those at all. Those are like high-end, mechanically inclined sets. They've all got like some kind of mechanisms going on in them. Uh, I shouldn't say high-end. I should say they're there for a little bit older kids and adults. Uh, and they've got all kinds of like gears and mechanics, and like some of them are motorized. So there's a lot of like construction equipment, and arm equipment, and vehicles. They're not to figure scale at all. What's and this they're thing? also not to scale with each other. They're just kind of all over the place. It's also what they use in the um, the robot sets. Are they? Uh, I think they're called the um, the schools have them. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. But. Yeah, there's a, there, there's a particular set, because um, like Owen, when he was in school, he was in robotics, and yeah. they used the, the version of Lego uh, that had the motors and stuff, but everything else was Technic. Yeah. Because Technic are, I mean, they're built for that kind of... Yeah, and you will also find Technic parts in some sets, some regular sets, because they've got some kind of mechanical thing going on. But anyway, so I built this crane, and in the housing behind the seat is where all the gears are that let you turn a few knobs and, like, it can, like, lower the main boom arm, lower the extension of the boom arm, contract and open the crane, uh, the scoop. You can do all these things. So I get the whole set put together. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, nothing's working on this. And I can see all the gears down inside there. And I'm, like, flipping through the instructions, trying to see what I can see and trying to see what's in the instructions. And I realize there's one piece buried about as deep as possible into all the gears that I put in backwards. Mindstorm, by the way. Mindstorm. Mindstorm is the, uh, um, the Lego robotics set. So anyways, yes. So, so I had, so I had to, so I had to stare at it for a very long time to figure out how few pieces I could remove without having to just tear it apart and start over. And so I had to figure out like which plates I could pull out to get down inside there, to pull it apart far enough, to get the piece out, turn it around, and put it back in. And then once I got it all back together, the thing worked great. Then I had to take it back apart a little bit once I bought the motor, because this was a set that could be motorized but didn't come with a motor. So later on, I did buy the motor and plugged it all in, and now it's really awesome. But, uh, yeah, the Technic sets, I never did buy the one I really wanted. It's a, it's like a like a giant scoop thing, like, uh, you know, Ghost Rider 2, Yes, the big crane thing he takes over. <laughs> it's it's one of those, and it pro- I think it stands like this tall. And it's got like the the giant tracks, and it's got the giant scoop bucket on it, and everything, and just all all the all the things to make that thing move. It's like I thought it looked really awesome. I never got around to buying it. And so the only and now it probably cost me a small fortune. The only Technic set I can even remember us having as even as kids was the it was the Technic Dragster. We still got the still got the wheels. I mean, we got all the pieces pretty much for it. We still got the wheels and everything, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Cause we're like, no, we want. Well, uh, if any, if the Technic things sound interesting to any of you listening to this, uh, they do make small, like ten, twenty dollar Technic sets, and it'll it'll have far less movement in it, but it will have an you'll get an idea of like some of the things that are possible with the bigger ones, just on a much smaller scale, so you can get one of those and test it out, see if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, because you definitely want to try those before you just jump into the deep end, because the bigger ones are quite expensive. So. And, I mean, it's a lot different than... And, and potentially frustrating, because I believe that crane I put together also didn't have numbered bags. And that's well into the numbered bag era. I think they were like, yeah, oh, you're buying a Technic set. You can do it, champ. It's like... This is this is for real engineers. Yeah. You don't yeah. build a bridge with, you know, build by number. Actually, technically, <laughs> now they do, so... Um, <laughs> To air, you know, to idiot proof things. So, well, anyways, I think we've rambled on. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's most of the without getting into the the monetary side. Gosh, I can only imagine if we put the monetary side in here, we'd be two yeah, hours let's, into that's, it. Yeah, that's why I wanted to, to break them up into two different videos, and this one probably went a lot longer than I planned. But uh, it should give you all kinds of information to work with. Uh, and the only other thing I would add is. Uh, Look around on YouTube. There's plenty of other people that also like put the sets together on video. If you want to see how that goes, uh, to give you an idea, and there's tons of review stuff out there. If you're like, well, I kind of want it, but I don't, and, you know, just don't. Uh, just know that you can also run into some other oddities, like with the Star Wars sets. There are certain sets that they will just keep making over and over again. Like I think there's. I'm going to ballpark and say there's at least seven different versions of the TIE Fighter at the moment, uh, and they all look different. So I bought the one that I liked, because to me, a lot of them, the the wing panels are too small. I bought the one that has the gigantic wing panels, uh, but they're not all like that. Like the current one, they're small, uh, which sucks, because right now the TIE Bomber and the TIE Interceptor are out, and they're not in scale with the TIE Fighter. Well, that's just like the uh, the tie advance that comes with Darth Vader's castle is not to minifig scale at yeah. all. It's meant to fit into the castle, which I I get it, 
because uh, obviously this castle is not to scale by right. any any close to the measure, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that kind of thing pops up. So, like, if you're like, "Oh man, I want a Tie Fighter," but this current one kind of sucks, just wait, or just buy one of the old ones. But just wait, they'll make another one because the Tie Fighter and the X Wing, give it time, they'll make another version. Uh, those are all; those are constant. Now, if you're looking for like a B Wing, eh, good luck. I think there's two, and they've both been out of print for a while. Uh, the A-Wing seems to be a little more frequent. The Y-Wing, you would think it'd be more frequent because it's been around since a New Hope, but it's really not. Uh, the TIE Bomber, this is the first one in over 10 years, and there's only one other one, and the other one sucks. Uh, <laughs> this one's definitely the better of the two. Uh, and the TIE Interceptor, it's been a long time since they made one of those as well. And there's only one TIE Defender, so there's only one tie crawler because those are all EU stuff. So, uh, which is that, that's one of the last little bit here about Star Wars stuff from the main movies will probably be remade over and over again in various forms. But if it's from anything kind of off in the periphery, if it's like there haven't been any Rogue One sets since Rogue One, there haven't been any Solo sets since Solo. There's only one or two Ahsoka sets, and they won't last long once you know once we're moved past those. Um, there's only one or two Kenobi sets. There's a handful of sets for Knights of the Old Republic, and then just the Old Republic. And then there's just a scattering of random EU stuff, like the TIE Defender and the TIE Crawler. But you just don't see stuff from outside the main series. And even then, it's mostly from the, from the first six. Because the last three are not commercially successful on that front very much. A uh, little side note, which we're going to talk about in the podcast probably. But uh, for those of you who are collecting other things, are like, hey, where's all the Ahsoka merchandise? Apparently Hasbro said, yeah, no, that's a hard pass from us. Like, we, you, you've you got to prove to us this show is actually going to succeed. Then we'll think about making stuff for you. No, if they made the Chimera... Yeah, I mean, the like, as far as, like, like the Chimera would be awesome in any kind of form. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's, like, there's like a couple tall Ahsoka figures, and then there's figures in the Black Series, but the Black Series draws from everything as far as the figures. You just want to get the uh, the little the little crab people's uh, mobile home. Dude, they better make a Lego set of one of those. You know, some of those crab people. Those were kind of cool. Yeah, one of the uh, redeeming factors about the... Yeah. Because the way it works is, like, I think there's two sets, and all the figures are crammed into those two sets. And uh, so, yeah, it's, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, so I guess Hasbro is just like, nope, nope, we've, we've been burned too much here. Well, it's not hope, happening. hopefully with Loki t- uh, Loki Season 2, we get uh, Mobius on his uh, jet ski. Jet ski, yeah, that'd be nice. I'd buy the set. Yeah, you can make a little $10 set. No, why not? It's Mobius and his jet ski. I mean, <laughs> 10 bucks, even if it was... Even if the piece count wasn't right, oh! Think. If if we don't actually see that scene in the show, like it, like it's like I think it's been built up. Like I think we kind of have to see it. Now. Yeah, I mean, hell, even the first episode they mentioned the yeah. jet ski. So I, I think before the end of the season, I think we're going to actually see that happen. So think, we'll still yeah. see though. But uh, but yeah, yeah. Now we're in order and ramble and other shit. This uh, isn't a podcast. I mean, we yeah. we kind of treated it like a podcast format. I mean, we do for most of our stuff. We don't we don't script any of this stuff, but. Yeah, so if, I, if I've if i done the, the editing correctly, there have been some pictures at various points here that kind of highlight what I've been talking about, hopefully. And if he hasn't done it correctly, definitely make sure in the comments below that you state and tell <laughs> yeah. us that, hey, we forgot yeah. something. But uh, otherwise, I uh, hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, there's a few other things that uh, Charboro Beefcake mentioned that we might want to look into, like, talking about how to start getting into collecting them, like we talked about figures and stuff like that. So that's an insanely broad topic because it's like, which figures? Uh, but we'll probably talk about like the current ones and that will also have a monetary component, although I think we'll probably just do that all in one video. Um, but anyway, we'll see how that turns out if we get around to it, which hopefully we will. Uh, but otherwise, Jim, you got anything else? No, I'm just now going to consciously not call them Legos. Yeah, like I said, I call them Legos occasionally too. But if you want to be super duper correct, it's Lego. It's the brand, and then the pieces are Lego blocks. So anyway, that's like I said, that's that's the the Danes for you. So anyway, 
hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, let us know down in the comments. Uh, it's YouTube. Presumably that's where you're watching this. If not, do the equivalent of what I'm about to say. Uh, we always appreciate likes, shares, subscribes, uh, and comments. Anything else you want to see? Uh, but other than that, uh, check wait for part two. And uh, whatever you do, don't uh, don't ever use the craggle on your blocks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the Lego movie and you'll figure it out. But don't do that. You will destroy it. So. Hey, and today is Taco Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, day of filming, at least, is Taco Tuesday. So, again, Lego movie reference. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I would say I uh, would like reference Jefferson Starship here. But we didn't build this city on rock and roll. We built it out of plastic blocks. So, All right. Anyway, just keep on clicking. See you.